These are pieces of audio equipment that can capture audio in 32-bit float. George the Tech. So the equipment I have to demonstrate today, the Rode NT1 fifth generation microphone, which has a very interesting feature. That is, it is both an XLR studio microphone as well as a USB microphone. Let's talk about what 32-bit float mode can do for us. When you record in 32-bit float mode, there is no gain control to adjust because you don't need to adjust gain. If I take the section of audio recorded in 32-bit float mode and normalize the audio, are we going to see what looks like the same thing on the left side with crunched, smushed peaks? Or is it going to preserve the full dynamic range and show what should be a clean audio signal? Drum roll, please. Boom! Check that out. <laughs> it worked. We took a file that previously had a tremendous amount of clipping. We were well over 12 dB or more. Now, because we're actually recording everything in 32-bit float correctly, we can record with levels much too high and still end up with levels that don't have any clipping. So you'll notice the first part is much lower. Then when I get very, very loud, it's now within our non-distorted range below zero. So let's find out when we get way too hot. Now I'm really clipping. I mean, according to Twisted Wave, I'm well beyond 12 dB, 13 dB over the clipping range. Amazing, right? It found the section of audio that was at its loudest and brought it down to minus 3 dB with zero trace of any distortion. So when your levels are this low, at low bit rates like 16 bit, there is a distinct increase in hiss and noise when you bring the levels back up later, either by gain or normalizing, you're going to have problems. Let's take our grossly under, under gained file, double click and select it and normalize it to minus three dB peak. Looks pretty good, right? Looks really good. Let's take a listen. Now we are recording in 32-bit float, but this time with a very low gain setting, very low gain setting of about minus 10. As you can see, the waveform is minuscule. We're not even peaking above minus 35 dB. So that's 32-bit float recording, and it's a beautiful thing. Now, what's the downside of the NT1? No headphone jack. You can monitor through software, but you are gonna get some latency. Well, zoom to the rescue with their UAC-232, which is right here on my desk. This thing looks cool. It looks pretty rugged. It's very, very lightweight. There is not much to this thing. There's no gain knobs. There's nothing to worry about with a bad pod or a loose connection or a loose knob because there's no gain knobs. All there is is phantom power buttons. So once I have the zoom control panel installed, and you don't even need this zoom control panel if you're not gonna monitor yourself because all this control panel is for is for monitoring. There's a loop back for music mode and there's a loop back for streaming mode. And what's the difference? Music mode will actually create two more tracks that you can record separately, which I think also I would consider to be podcasting mode. So that means you could record yourself on one track and you could record the person talking to you on whatever platform you want, whether it be Zoom or StreamYard or Source Connect, whatever. And what will happen is you'll get two more tracks that you can record into your DAW from the system. And that's great for doing podcasts or doing music production where you want to re-record synthesizers and other stuff from the computer. With the Rode NT1 5th Gen, which is by far the easiest one product entry point into 32-bit float recording, the improvement in sound is dramatic. Starting out with the Rode NT1 32-bit float and then moving on to the UAC32 for those who want more control, monitoring, and BYO mic.